a lot of coaches have a rule that they don't start true freshmen, no matter what position it is. But Jeremiah Smith might be an exception to the rule. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every now and then there's a player that comes along that kind of goes against the grain, forces you to do things you don't normally do as a coach. And Jeremiah Smith is one of those players. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Tuesday edition of Locked on Buckeyes. Here on Tuesday, March 26th in the year 2024, I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. And you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Simply visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Jeremiah Smith is one of those receivers that has been hyped up for a very, very, very long time. When he became a high school football player and he got an offer from the Ohio State University, people realized, hey, this means something. If Ohio State offers you at receiver, it just means more. And that's how it was for Jeremiah Smith. Now, there are some that say, hey, play him, start him. There are some that say, no, don't do it. Let his play do the talking. If he is good enough to start, start Jeremiah Smith and just let that man go out there and cook. We have heard Denzel Burt sit, uh, talk about him and praise how, he, how he's playing. After only two spring practices, we got to hear Marvin Harrison Jr. discuss Jeremiah Smith and how pleased he is with Smith, the receiver. We have heard Heartline and Day and so many people praise Jeremiah Smith, the receiver. Even Brian Smith, Baltimore's recruiting analyst that knows Jeremiah Smith personally, has seen him with his own two eyes play the football. And you're like, oh, that's just that's just Jeremiah. You may say, Jay, what does that phrase mean? That's just Jeremiah. It's what he does. He is just that good. He is that dude at high school. And I do believe down the road, he will be that dude in college because that's just what Jeremiah Smith is. He's a good football player that develops quickly, that adjusts to the play of the football that he at the level he is on and just lets his play do the talking for him. Now, I do think also, not just let his play do the speaking for him, but also, I do believe that when it comes to Jeremiah Smith, the Buckeyes might have to play him. Think about it. Emeka Abuka starter, automatically, done deal. The next two guys on my list currently that have already played at Ohio State that should play, Cardinal Tate and Brandon Ennis. I understand they're sophomore. I don't care. I don't care about that at all. To me, they're the next guys. Now, you able to say, Jay, what about... Jaden Ballard or Kojo Antwi or any of the other season Buckeye receivers, not so season as far as playing time, but season as far as being on campus for a long time. Do you think that Jeremiah Smith is better than those guys right now? Some of you do, some of you don't. No one's seen him play in the Buckeye uniform as far as inside the shoe. No, not, none of us really have. So what do you think that? I have been waiting and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting a long time for one of the other receivers at Ohio State, one of the two that I just mentioned, to make a name for themselves inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center as far as being a guy that should be a contender to play football at receiver as a starter. I have been waiting for a very long time, and I know if I have been waiting, you've been waiting too. In come Jeremiah Smith to the equation. Do I think he'll be better than Carnell Tate or Brandon, Brandon Ennis when all is said and done? Based on the things that I've read and heard, I do. That's not to say Ennis and Tate will be trash or bad or won't have good moments or won't be really good receivers on the road. And may, I, I'm not saying that. I just think Jeremiah Smith is that different. And when you have a guy like that that is that different, you have to play him. Think about how it was for college basketball coaches to shift their mindset from, A, hey, you need an older team to win a national championship. You need three- or four-year guys that have been in your program, that have paid their dues, that have done everything they need to do to win a 
national championship. That was the narrative. And then all of a sudden, we had the one and done era where it wasn't so much the season guys, the older guys. It was, hey, first, first year guys, or maybe second year guys, you get them at the elite level, done deal. Everything is great. And that's where things were. And then all of a sudden, where, where are we at currently? The season guys are back. It's almost like a cycle. And I remember talking to one of my high school football coaches. This is back, oh, eight, seven, eight, nine years ago. My brother was a volunteer football coach at Warren Central High School in Indianapolis, Indiana. We were there. Maybe it was senior day. And to my right was Jeff George, former NFL quarterback who played at Warren Central High School and played college ball at Illinois. And I'm like, oh, that's Jeff George. Like, he looks like a guy. Um, his boy, his. I think one of his boys was the starting quarterback that year for Warren Central. Forget if it was the older one or the younger one, but I'm like, oh, <laughs> I know that guy. I know that name. My coach, I was talking to him, Coach Fiesel, my favorite coach, best coach I ever had playing football. Also, he was the hardest coach on me. And we were talking about the spread offense versus the old school physical run the ball down your throat style of offense. And I said, hey, do you think this spread offense is going to be what we have forever? And he said, no, I think it'll be a cycle. Um, you know, it'll go back to the way it was. It may change again. It'll go back to the way it was. Kind of a cycle. You can't go away from the physicality of football, especially running the ball. And we see that in college basketball. But what happened in college basketball? People had to shift their mindset from, one, the season older guy to having the younger guy. And then it was, oh, let's have the season older guys again because that's what actually works consistently. Now, when it comes to Jeremiah Smith, you got to sh you got to shift your mind. That is the first thing you have to do. You can't go with the normal rule of, "Oh, he's a true freshman. He can't start." And eh, that ain't going to work. It's not. Because outside of the three receivers that I just mentioned in Emeka Abuka and Brandon Ennis and Carno Tate, nobody else on Ohio State's wide receiver room is really screaming to me right now, "They got to play." That's an older guy, not a new incomer. That's an older guy. Nobody is screaming. They got to play. I remember a year ago during the pro day, people looking at Jaden Ballard, and he was out there running routes and catching balls and kind of getting an early look at the in the pro day. And people were saying, "Oh, he's the next. He's the next thing. Like he, he's the next next big guy." And he made some amazing plays here. He's not a bad receiver. There's just a lot of guys there that are better than him. You just gotta shift your mind, man. Shift things. Are, there are cycles. I'm not saying this is always going to be going to be the case where a true freshman comes in and he starts because he's just that. Sometimes you're a true freshman that's really, really good, and you can't start because the coach says, "Hey, no, I want the season guys." Yeah, the same coach could have shifted his mind to play a true freshman and and start him, but ultimately, no. Go back to that. Some of these things are cycles, but in a cycle, somebody and or something has to push against the norm or go against the grain to get things done in a better way initially. Did you ever think Nick Saban will start a true freshman at safety? I mean, some of you may have, some of you didn't. He started Caleb Downs and he was a phenomenal football player a year ago. He's now at Ohio State as a true sophomore looking for him to play more big boy football in Columbus this year, just like he did last year down there in Tuscaloosa. Some guys just push against the norm, go against the grain. That's Jeremiah Smith. There's a benefit to playing him. Great. He's a good receiver. There's a negative against of playing him. He's a true freshman. What outweighs the other? Do the pros outweigh the cons? Probably. Then play that man. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Also, I have some things to say about the big news we got about Ohio State's spring game. It, it involves Big Fox. We'll dive into it next. This episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Guys, that's 200 bucks to use. On point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Simply visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, simply visit FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
This episode is also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors Passion Drive and Patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because at eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Are you tired of watching Fox Sports or are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN and tired of doing it every single day? Had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on the YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. The spring game is always one of those moments every single year that we are looking at and saying, um, who, are we, who is going to wow us this year? Who is going to be a player that is going to say, this is the guy? He is a next big thing at Ohio State. Who, who is going to be the starting quarterback? Who is going to take be the guy to lead the Buckeyes in rushing? Who is going to do this? Who is going to do that? A lot of things in the spring game. I am going to be watching specifically the offensive line, the defensive line. I will be there. My wife will be there. A lot of you will be there as well. And if you are not, for the first time ever, Ohio State will have a nationally televised spring game on Big Fox, April 13th at noon Eastern. Now, normally I think that the Big Ten Network has a spring game, and it's a local thing. The conference has it. I think the conference tries to get as many spring games um, broadcast as possible, which is why they're spread out in the ways that they are as far as day of the week or time that they are being kicked off and things of that nature. But this is huge. I remember for so long I was looking forward to the game that Joey Galloway and Kirk Herbstreit will be on the field for the spring game on the ESPN and they would be basically on the field, just commentating and talking to themselves, not individually like Herbie talking to Herbie and Galloway talking to Galloway, but more so talking back and forth, having a conversation about things that are going on there at the spring game. And I always thought that was a fun sight to see. Now my guess is for the spring game, I know it may not be the, the flavor that you want, for the spring game, but some people are getting off the Gus Johnson train. I am not. Gus Johnson, Joe Klatt, if you get those two a Genie Tap doing a spring game, buddy, buddy, I am here for it. I am here for somebody's number one broadcasting team to be inside the shoe for the spring game, broadcasting that bad boy for the entire nation to see. Yes. Now, maybe this is a sign of things to come down the road with the Buckeye spring game and well, excuse me, with the Buckeye season this year, because I don't think that the, the people that are at these networks are simply just going to Ohio state and looking over the rest of the big 10. Think about it. What do you have? You have the team that won the national championship in the big 10 conference. It could have been the team that, Fox went to. Now, I'm not saying Fox is going, but I don't know when Michigan is going to, if spring game is, but it's at Ohio State. They could have simply said, oh, we're only going to this school. It could have been USC, um, where Fox is the headquarters there in LA. I mean, it w- would have made a whole lot of sense, or could have been Washington, who is the national runner up. I mean, there's so many things that could have happened. But for it to be Ohio State, buddy, that is huge. 
And maybe people are saying that the talent is so great. Ryan Day is doing such a good job coaching and making alterations throughout the offseason. Yeah, you lost Villa Bryan, but you replaced him with Chip Kelly. Yeah, you lost Tony Alford, but you're going to replace him with somebody that's a really good running back coach. Um, yeah, you 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 let go of Pierre Eliano. You got in Matt Guerrero. You, you promoted James Laurinaitis. A lot of the things Ryan Day has done this offseason have been on point. Kyle McCord transfers. You're bringing Will Howard. Oh, Caleb Downs is available. You go get him. Oh, Julian Sam, you go get him. Oh, Christian Junkins, you go get him. Will Kazmark, you go get him. Ryan has done a lot of great things that make Ohio State, by some people say, they're the preseason favorite to win the national championship. I'm not going that far. I will leave my predictions for something that happened here on the show in August, not coming right now in March, because there's a lot of things I need to see and think about before making my early, early, early prediction about who's going to win the national championship. This is big, man. This is big. And I hope this is something that happens throughout the rest of Ryan Day's tenure or for the for the rest of history. Ohio State, nationally televised, spring game, put the bad boy on Fox. Network television. This isn't just regular old cable where you're worried about the FS1 or the ESPN. No, this is network. So a lot of the grandmas and grandpas around the country or around the world that are for, really around the country – that are forced to try to figure out where the peacock is or uh, Vic is not on the Amazon yet, but maybe one day it will be on the Amazon or where the Big Ten Network is. No, no struggle at all. You own Big Fox. Everybody get big, gets Big Fox. Everybody gets the NBC. Everybody gets the CBS. And what I hope for the rest of the Big Ten and the rest of the country we get more spring games like this. Now, you got to be one of them big boys. I mean, not just really big boy teams and the way you play. You got to be one of them brands. And I think you know when I say you got to be one of them brands, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Purdue, you're not one of them brands. IU in football, you're not one of them brands. I know Michigan just won the national championship. They're one of them brands, but Ohio State's brand is bigger than that team up north. Washington, you are one of them brands to a, like in a tier, but a tier above yours is Ohio State because they're one of them brands. You understand if you're one of them brands, Fox is going to come after you, ESPN is going to come after you, hopefully CBS as well to put you on the national stage network television because you're one of them brands and you're one of them brands that has a chance to win a national championship. Teams that I think are competing right now for Ohio State, a team to watch right now, the one team that's down there in Athens that I still think is one of the best teams in college football, and if they would have played at Michigan last year, would have beat Michigan in the CFP, y'all better watch out for Georgia. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> y'all better watch out for them Bulldogs because if not, they might shock you like they shock everybody down there in the Southeastern Conference when they play them. And yes, I understand. Their last game last year was a loss. Trust me, that outcome shocked me. They might not just shock you in a win. They might shock you in a loss, too, because Georgia, I do think, beats. If Georgia and Alabama play 10 times, I think Georgia wins over half of them. Just saying, that was last year. I do think in the upcoming year, they're going to be really good, too. So I'm here. If it's a Georgia-Ohio State national championship game, Hey, like Tio said, get the popcorn ready because you're going to need it for that one. <laughs> That's going to be one of them games we will be talking about for a long period of time. One thing I think we'll be talking about very soon is another player losing his black stripe. Jeremiah Smith lost his last week. Who could be the next player or players to lose theirs? We'll dive into that next. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels can only be described as an armada. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NC2A tournament. They're a favorite pick by many to make a run for a championship. 
take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more, and the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus also has more cues than anyone in Ohio. They can fix your billiards woes in their shop that is on site. They are truly the class of their field. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Austin, Canada, Billiards, and more. They are family-owned and operated, and when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you're going to know. You're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. And check out some of their new games in stock now. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every single day. I really appreciate the everydayers. They are my kind of people. And the everydayers caught a short over the weekend when Jeremiah Smith lost his black stripe after the fourth spring practice of the current session, which sets a new record, a record that was set last year, a year ago, by Cardinal Tate when he lost his black stripe in the fifth spring practice in that cycle to be the fastest person ever in this short period of a tradition at Ohio State to lose their black stripe. This is something that was started by Urban Meyer back in 2012 when he was hired as a Buckeyes uh, head football coach. And he said, hey, you might get a – you will get an offer. You might even sign that national letter of intent. But you got to earn – improve you have what it takes to be a Buckeye and that black stripe tradition has stayed and it's still going on now to this day and I do think with Jeremiah Smith losing his black stripe I am starting to wonder and to think who of the remaining 14 early enrollees could lose their black stripe next Jeremiah Smith was the number one overall recruit in this class so maybe no surprise that he already lost his but he is making a lot of noise for himself right now. But when I think about it, when I think about other players that can lose their black stripes, one, this is in no particular order, no particular order at all. One guy that I do think can do it, Edric Houston. Why won the position? Two, I do think he has the skill set and the drive and the pursuit to be somebody that could be next up. Now, I am not saying it's going to be um, at the beginning of this week or uh, at the conclusion of Saturday's scrimmage. I do think there will be more black stripes that will be removed after that scrimmage, kind of being a benchmark and a milestone moment for the Buckeye spring practice session this year. But I do think Edge of Houston, the four-star defensive end or edge from Buford, Georgia, I do think he is a guy that is going to be someone to watch this week in don't be surprised if he loses his black stripe. Now, some of you might hear Buford, Georgia, and say, wait, isn't it the spot that K.J. Bolden and the safety that Ohio State was trying to get a commitment from? Didn't he go to the high school? Yes. And then some of you may even realize, wait, didn't Dylan Rayola transfer and leave Arizona to go play football over there in Georgia? Yes, he did. And so, yes, that is a hotbed. That is a, a school in the area. That has a lot of really good football players. And it's amazing that Buford, Closer to Athens than Columbus is, and that young man said, hey, I'm not going to go to the close one. You're not going to go to the in-state school, the school that's one of the best in the country. I'm coming to Ohio State, another school that's one of the best in the country as well. Another one that I'm thinking about um, as far as summer enrollees, the next guy I would have said would have been Mylon Graham, but Mylon Graham is not a not excuse me not an early enrollee, so he is not one that I am going to currently say can do it. James Peoples, four star recruit from San Antonio, Texas, out of Veterans Memorial High School, sitting at five nine and a half, two hundred pounds. Brian Smith really, really, really likes him. There are times we talk on the show, and James Peoples comes up. Remember the position. Now, you may say, Jay, when it comes to black stripes, it doesn't mean position. You're exactly right. But when you're a receiver, you're getting ball stoned to you. When you're an edge, you're rushing the passer in one-on-one drills. 
those things mean a whole lot. Now, if you're an offensive lineman or, or interior D lineman, it may take you a little bit more time just because of the spotlight and the way things are currently in practice. Now, it's not a bad thing, not a bad thing at all, but sometimes it's easier for receivers to, well, they'll be easier, they'll be losing their black stripe quicker than others. And I do believe Austin Mack, and I heard this on, on the podcast, don't know if it was confirmed or just kind of refreshing your memory. Austin Mack held the record for the quickest player to lose their black stripe prior to Cardinal Tate. And I think that was after six or seven practices, 2016, 2015, forget exactly what year he came out. But think about that. It's, it, it takes a lot. The three faster to do it are receivers. I think that's something to say as far as, hey, if Mylon Graham was a summer enrollee, he would be next. But last but not least, excuse me, early enrollee. Last but not least, I got Edric Hughes and James Peoples. And then Julian saying, I, I think if we go through the end of this week and saying does not have his black stripe removed, I think that'll be a shock, a big, big shock. As there are rumors going around about what unit he is running, going with in practice, and how amazing he is, and how he could be someone to really shake things up. I do think he could shake things up in the QB competition. Julian Sand is another one. Now, if I wanted to throw somebody else in there as kind of a maybe an honorable mention, where I only have three right now. Ian Moore, four-star offensive lineman, interior O lineman, sitting at 6'6, 317 from New Palestine High School in New Pal. Palestine, Indiana, and then also Aaron Scott Jr. Um, I'll throw Bryce West in there as well. They're two in-state guys, one from Springfield High School in Holland, Ohio, and then Bryce West from um, that factory. <laughs> that factory needs to get going again. That Glenville pipeline is back open. Uh, Glenville High School, <clears throat> I believe it's in Cleveland, Ohio. <clears throat> that young man there, those two are kind of honorable mention, but I think Edric Houston, James Peoples, and Julian Sander, the three guys that I'm watching, saying it wouldn't shock me if they lose their black stripes by the end of this week. I love being back. I love being back with y'all. I really enjoyed the show. Got a lot more good stuff coming your way. Trying to get my guy, Jeff Hunt, back with the show. Trying to schedule something to kind of uh, provide a thought for you, the viewer and the listener, that I think is something that will kind of shine light on what Ohio State needs to do in the upcoming season. We discussed it previously before the last show we recorded, but the next show we record together will be about this very, 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 very important topic that the Buckeyes need to accomplish if they want to accomplish all their goals in 2024. Have you heard the news? Lockdown has lost the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on the YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on X at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Buckeye fans, out here on a Tuesday. We'll see you next time.